Welcome to week two in our readings. This week we're going to look at John chapters 11 through 21, and we're going to talk about the rescue mission of Jesus. Now last week we talked about the first 10 chapters in John. We saw the person and work of Jesus Christ, and we saw his centrality in the whole message of the Bible. And in this section, let's take a look at the mission of Jesus Christ and how the disciples and even the people in his day didn't really understand his mission. We see this in John 12. It says, the next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. Jesus was already hugely pop- popular at this point. It says a huge crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. And they shouted, praise God, bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. You see, These were Jewish people that were expecting that Jesus was coming, and uh, the Passover was a was a huge celebration in the Jewish in the life of the Jewish people. And these people were expecting that Jesus was coming, and he was going to be the king of of Israel, and he was going to raise Israel up to prominence again in their day, kind of like King David in the Old Testament, if you know those stories. And and they didn't understand that Jesus didn't come to establish this kind of kingdom, but Jesus was coming for something else. We see it later on in verse twenty. He says this, The truth is, a kernel of wheat must be planted in the soil, and unless it dies, it will be alone, a single seed. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. So he was talking about what his real mission was. He was coming into Jerusalem for the purpose of going to the cross. Nobody knew this at this point, but he did know it. This is this was his mission, was to rescue us for the kingdom of heaven, not for some earthly kingdom. He didn't come to set up a rule at that time on the earth. He came to deliver us from our sins, not to deliver us from the Romans. And he says this in verse 25, those who love their life in this world will lose it. And those who despise their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And all those who want to be my disciples must come and follow me because my servants must be where I am. And if they follow me, the father will honor them. Now we're going to pick up this theme a little bit more in the next video, but for now you need to understand he was trying to show them his rescue mission was of a different sort. See, people have all kinds of wrong ideas and expectations about Jesus. They come to him only for what he can give them in this life, missing out on his greatest gift, which is spiritual. I mean, if you noticed all of the miracles he did in the Gospel of John, people were attracted to that because he wanted them to meet their needs in the here and now. But Jesus came for something much greater than this. Now, why don't you talk about this as a group right now? Have you observed this in your own life? This, this wrong expectation about what coming to Jesus does for you. Again, maybe, maybe it does mean healing. Maybe it does mean healing your marriage. It can mean a lot of temporal things in your life. But ultimately, he came to give us freedom. He ultimately came to allow us to be in relationship with him. He ultimately came to set up a different kind of a kingdom. Why don't you talk a little bit about this, some of the missed expectations and wrong ideas about Jesus. Talk about it a little bit right now, and then we'll see in the next video, and we'll talk about his rescue and the cross more specifically.